Hello friends, one of the resources that starts becoming more and more vital as the game goes on is going to be plastic, and there are a couple of different ways that we could produce this. And this is the first one that I've done, that there's really only two options, so it's going to be a big versus battle. Ah, it's versus, whoa! Alright, that took way too long to edit, I'm sure. And... <laughs> Here's your two options. Uh, we have Glossy Drecos versus the Polymer Press. All right, this, this intro is lame. Let's get to the real part of the video. All right, our first option here, Glossy Drecos. Let's talk about these. Um, I'm gonna also preface this by this is easily the closest uh, the two options are really going to be in maybe any of these videos I ever make. So I'm really just going to talk about each of them in terms of their, like, pros and cons. Choosing a winner is going to be really hard. And it may also conflict with some videos that I put out in the past, because... Uh, there's... These are very situational, kind of depends on the timing and the builds. Um, I tend to just recommend things that are very straightforward and, uh, very consistently reproduced, so... I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, Glossy Drecos. So the idea with these guys is if you feed regular Drecos, which are very common, mealwood, they will start to lay eggs for Glossy Drecklets. Now Glossy Drecklets, once you get them, if you can take them to the shearing station right here, or right here, when you shear them, they will give you plastic, and they will actually give you quite a bit. Um, this is a pretty easy setup, all things considered. You just need to grab some Drecos, put it in a room like this, and then you need to set up a shipping system to then ship all the excess glossy Drecos to one place and all the excess regular Drecos to another place. This is also going to have a lot of interesting side effects. Um, one of which is you're going to get a lot of reed fibers from this, you're going to get a lot of eggshells, and you're going to get a lot of meat. So ultimately this setup is actually really useful for more than just the plastic that it would produce. Uh, so the basic idea is, is really, if you've never done ranching before, we'll just kind of dive into it really quickly. I'm just going to have Drecos and Glossy Drecos in this room. Uh, down in this room is just going to be a way to wrangle them and put them back in here, assuming that we actually need more. So, going to have a critter sensor here, and if the critter sensor is below my capacity, which is going to be 8, I'm just going to close this door and allow this critter drop off to work so my duplicates can grab them and move them back over here. I talk about that particular concept a lot in my walkthroughs here, so I'm not going to go into excruciating detail. But that's the basic idea. Uh, also, you'll want to flood this area down here with hydrogen so that all the Drecos that live in here will constantly regrow their scales so that you can shear them more than once. So you will need some kind of source of hydrogen, or you can just kind of vacuum it out somewhere in the map and put it in here. It doesn't need to be incredibly dense, but it also has the second upside of if you put a Weezwort in there, it will help keep this area cool which is unusually warm, uh, all things considered. I think the, the animals themselves and the stations and stuff in here do produce more heat than you would expect, especially if they're sitting in hydrogen, so... I don't know. I was kind of surprised by that after labbing this out a little bit. But uh, the other things that these will produce as a byproduct is when they eat the mealwood or whatever you're feeding them, they will produce phosphorite. Phosphorite is needed in order to power your Weezworts effectively. Like, they basically just consume the Phosphorite. So, kind of a nice little uh, symbiotic relationship here, as you have a Weezwort that's keeping everything cool, and your Drecos and everything producing the fuel that they're going to need to create that effect. So, interesting, lightweight cooling going on here. The shipping system is really just going to be... Uh, this is a little bit overdone, possibly, but um, you don't have to do it exactly like this. But basically what's going to get shipped out of this room is everything except for dirt. Um, the dirt I really just want to have sitting in a conveyor receptacle here, or you could drop it on the ground and have your auto sweepers feed to your meal wood so that all your duplicates are spending time doing is shearing and uh, grooming and going to your critter drop off. That's really the only downside of this is that it takes more duplicate time than the other option. But this is something you can do earlier produces a hilarious amount of plastic um, in just the time that I've been labbing this out. Uh, I've produced a ridiculous amount. 
And this can immediately fund a bunch of other things, like you could start making plastic tiles for the ground here. You could start making your ladders out of plastic to help your duplicates move a little bit faster. You could start setting up transit tubes if you wanted to. The most important thing though is you can start setting up your steam turbines before you get oil. So that can be super duper handy. Um, I think I've gone into a reasonable amount of detail here. Oh, by the way, your duplicates are going to need suits and a water lock to get into this hydrogen area, so... I'm not going to go over this in a lot of detail. If you're interested in all the exact working parts of this, um, I may make like a Let's Build video where I go into a lot more detail, but just not the right scope for this video. But, I don't know. Glossy Drecos are very, very good, and I haven't really talked about them in my walkthroughs before. And I sort of regret it a little bit. I don't know. Let's take a look at the other option, which is something that I've talked about a lot more, and we'll kind of weigh the pros and cons of that. Okay, the good old Palmer Press. Um, I talk about this a lot. By the way, that's kind of hard to say. Palmer Press. No, I just messed it up. Okay, whatever. Uh, this is uh, something that I've talked about in my walkthrough videos so far, and it's the option that I will typically tell people to start off with. Only because the inputs and outputs are pretty straightforward. Um, it doesn't take a lot of duplicate time to use. But the downside is that it really is dependent on having oil. And for me, that was one of the harder hurdles to go over once I was a newer player. So... This is from our base game walkthrough. Um, I don't really remember what part it's at. It looks like we're about to capture water. Uh, so yeah, it looks like we just got into the oil biome, but you will need some access to oil, which it looks more intimidating than it actually is. You will need to refine that oil, and then you will need to send that refined oil, or I guess we'll just call it petroleum here because that's what it's actually called, into your polymer press. You'll need a good amount of cooling to keep this polymer press cool because it does produce a lot of heat. Um, but a sim very simple setup, especially compared to the last one. Once you get petroleum flowing, this is just a tiny little room. Doesn't produce a tremendous amount of, or rather require a tremendous amount of power. 240 is nothing to sneeze at if it's on all the time. But by that point, you should have access to petroleum-based power anyway. And that's kind of a drop in the bucket compared to how much you can produce there. But yeah, pretty straightforward setup here. I mean, polymer press connected to heavy watt wire. I have it its own little area and above a pool of water that's going to help keep it cool. Uh, the pool of water is also really handy to cool down the plastic as it gets sent through here so that it's not, you know, dropping really hot plastic into your base. Um, I don't know. This is pretty decent. Uh, obvious downsides is, yeah, you need oil. But the upside is really that it's easy and you don't need duplicate time once this is up. This can run as much as you want to. And if you don't need any more plastic, you can just turn it off. Or if you want to stop using your petroleum, you can just turn it off. So, I don't know. I guess if you really want to be nerdy and get technical, you could say that indirectly it's causing some duplicate time to be spent here at the oil refinery, which I'm not super mad at. Um, I like this option, as I just talked about in the last video. But if you have other ways of producing petroleum, this is potentially a no duplicate time required at all type of solution. So, I don't know. Simple, straightforward. That's why I've always talked about it. But I'm still a little borderline as to whether I regret talking about this or not in all of my walkthrough videos because the Draco solution is a little less likely that it's going to be messed up. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could mess something like this up only because this produces so much heat and only because getting petroleum is a little bit complicated for a newer player. So I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself. So. Let's finally put an end to this, and let's get to the versus showdown ending screen. It's not going to be anything fancy like I did in the intro, just our regular one. All right, let's go there. Okay, victory podium time. Victory podium usually has three spots, but some of these videos are really only going to have two, so there is no third place. Get out of here. Ah, dig X across the screen. All right, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this is probably the hardest one that I have in terms of picking which one's better. Um, I kind of laid out the case for both of them in terms of like their pros and cons. And I'm going to contradict myself a little bit in my walkthroughs and put the polymer press second. I'm only putting it second because it's not nearly as accessible. Um, it's also easier to make mistakes with. The heat is a big deal, especially for newer players. It's one of the hardest things to deal with is your base overheating, so I guess I have to put the Palmer Press second. 
which automatically means that these glossy Drekos are going to be first. Uh, which, I don't know, kind of surprised me when I was doing some, like, research and labbing and stuff like this for this video. Still not 100% sure if I would recommend those in my walkthroughs, but if you're just looking to produce plastic, it's kind of hard to argue with this. Uh, gives you a lot of other upsides, gives you a lot of phosphorite. You can make use of use of uh, planted weaswarts for cooling. Um, you're going to get a lot of eggshells, a lot of barbecue. I don't know. Pretty interesting outcome, I thought, at least when I was first starting this out. But yeah, winner, glossy Drekos by the slimmest of margin, by the Dreco snout or whatever's on the front of their face. All right, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. There'll be a lot more of these coming up soon. Okay, see you later.